Hey, it's Cable here from One to One Fitness, and today I wanted to shoot a quick little video and talk to you a little bit about uh, effective exercise selection. I think whether you're working out at home or whether you're working out at a gym or whether you use a crazy service like ours, whether that's personal training or boot camp, I think it's really good to understand the why behind what it is that you're doing. So there are a few things that are involved with exercise selection. Ultimately, it first comes down to what is it that we're trying to achieve. You know, most of us just want to look better in that crazy thing we call the mirror or look and feel good about ourselves. So we're most concerned about what exercise and ultimately our nutrition, because that's a factor, can do for changing the way we look. But today, let's just talk about exercise. So when it comes to changing your body and ultimately losing that body fat and looking more lean and toned, we're really talking about the physiology of how your body works, how it uses energy. And in today's world, that's really, really important because we have kind of two dynamic problems with how we live our lives. One, our food quality is deteriorating, so we're eating more processed food, things that are devoid of nutrition and usually more calorie dense. So even our small meals are highly calorie packed, full of generally carbohydrates, sugar, and fat, so we have this crazy imbalance and an abundance of resources and too few of another that our body's trying to compensate with. The second problem is that we are all perpetually busy. It's amazing how hard it is to find time for anything these days. And as such, believe it or not, one of the biggest problems we see as trainers is people are actually underfeeding themselves, okay? So instead of that three square meals a day and three small snacks that we've all known for decades is really good for keeping our body going, we find a lot of people are only eating one or two or three times a day and then on top of that this very broken nutrition. So we have our bodies that are really struggling to figure out how to effectively use energy. So the first thing we do is we turn to exercise to improve our exercise physiology. So how do we, how do we change our, our physiology with exercise? Well, it's kind of interesting because it isn't the old school method that we see these days uh, in the public gyms. So it's, it's not wandering around from station to station and doing a number of repetitions and so on and so forth. We, modern science actually understands that in order to create that physiological change for a lasting period of time, the best way to do that is to use periods of elevated heart rate followed by brief periods of rest. And this stimulates a metabolic change after about 20 to 30 minutes that actually keeps our body going at an increased physiological state for anywhere from six to even up to 48 hours in some studies. So how does this fit into what you're doing for exercise? And what does it mean for somebody like us that we offer two distinct services in personal training and boot camp? Well, first off, let's talk about some of the other things that most people aren't concerned about or aren't as aware of when they start to exercise. Because we live our lives typically doing a lot of things in a, in a very standard way, our body actually becomes very imbalanced, okay? And we recognize this through our late 20s, early 30s, so on into our 40s and beyond as those nagging aches and pains, you know, the bad knees or my bum shoulder. And in fact, even, even somebody that exercises regularly will have these imbalances. As I was filming this video this morning, I even noticed it about myself. So if I stand here nice and straight so you can look at my shoulders, if you look at from side to side, you can notice that my both my shoulders are slightly different shape and even my one shoulder, sorry, other side since I'm shooting on the camera here, looks to be a little lower than the other. Okay, this is because we do things with our dominant hand. Okay, we sleep on a certain side all the time. We spend a lot of our lives in chairs in front of us working on computers and very little time activity behind us. So even when you exercise regularly and are fairly active, even still we have muscle imbalances that ultimately lead to aches and pains in how we feel in life. So this is all gets jumbled together in exercise and exercise selection. <coughs> In a personal training environment, if you've had any experience with personal training, you probably notice that personal training is typically either set rep type exercise, where we're using specific exercises for a certain number of sets, for a certain number of repetitions, and then resting in between. The primary use of those exercises is two key things, okay, is first off, keeping you safe, as we kind of get to learn about you and your body and how it functions and how you perform in certain environments and the information you've given us about aches and pains, we choose things that we feel uh, will likely be safe in consideration of the information that we have and we're using that opportunity to learn about you. The other really really key thing that we're that astute trainers are doing in that set rep type exercise is trying to deal with these imbalances. So taking an individual like myself it, it's always going to be key for me to do more exercise for my back than it is for exercise for my chest okay because I want to try to balance out what's happening with my shoulders. I want to make sure as I'm stretching that I'm going to be stretching 
uh, this shoulder a bit more than the other shoulder and ultimately the muscles of the neck okay in an effort to make sure that we're trying to balance out those things and working a little bit better sometimes as a client you don't always realize that your trainer is doing these things because we also try to keep it fun enjoyable and interesting for you by choosing different exercises because there's lots of different things that we can use to accomplish the same end goal that make exercise more fun and entertaining for you but ultimately help us keep you safe and deal with those imbalances now also in a personal training environment you might have experienced circuit training or interval type training. You might see people doing this at the gym. You might be familiar with beach body, etc. These types of things. So that interval training is really based on the physiology. That idea of we want to extend our heart rate really high. We want to have brief periods of rest or perhaps we want to use extended duration training, okay, which would be like marathon training where we are using a defined period of time to exercise longer and longer. Essentially all of those have specific ends to increase certain aspects of our physiology, okay, whether it's to increase oxygen delivery in the case of the marathon trainer or it's in the case of all of us just shamelessly trying to look lean, toned, and muscular using that high intensity or interval type physiology uh, training to get your body to burn more calories in a short period of time as well as the time after you stop exercising. Okay, so in personal training, I've ordered these kind of in our level of priority. When we meet you as a client, as a personal trainer, our key objective is we want to make sure that you are always safe. Okay, because it's inevitable throughout life that you're going to face injury, whether it's slipping or falling on the ice, or that's that one time even exercising where it looks like you're doing something perfectly, but it's just wrong enough that we take an exhausted system that's overload and we have a mild injury. These things do happen. If you're if you're going to move, you're going to get hurt. The key is to have be as healthy as uh, body as possible so that it recovers quickly. Now if we flip over to boot camp, you notice that our priorities really change. So in PT, it's always safety first. Next, we want to deal with those imbalances so we make your body work better and last longer for the rest of your life. And finally, we want to deal with that thing that you most likely came in for, which is the physiology to look and feel great in the mirror. But boot camp is a whole different animal. As you see, these priorities shift first to physiology, second to safety, and then finally to imbalances. Well, why is that? Number one, because it's a group program, okay? And number two, that we know that the majority of people, their primary interest is in developing or altering that physiology. So in boot camp, we really focus, particularly at FitBody, we use what we call the afterburn methodology, okay? Which is a similar philosophy of using that periods of high heart rate versus brief breaks of or low heart rate in an effort to stimulate that metabolic effect. So because it, we're really focused on that physiology and because it's a group, it makes it more difficult to manage safety, which is why safety uh, falls to number two and why we really try to make sure we start and end each class with the awareness things. Make sure don't do something if it doesn't feel right. If, it, if you're even concerned at all, just stop, raise your hand, wait for an instructor. You know, you want to make sure that you, on your first few days, you're performing at a lower intensity the next few days because that soreness that we all joke about and laugh about is fine as long as it only lasts for 48 hours hours because recognize what that soreness is is you've actually injured your body okay so as that soreness goes away your body is healing and feeling better but if it lasts more than 48 hours in truth you've injured your body more than is required to make progress so understanding how to manage your intensity is important now along with that something very misunderstood is duration Okay, modern science understands that there's no longer any need to exercise for hours and hours and hours. We still have a lot of clients that really like to come to uh, boot camp for an hour, even though our boot camps are 30 minutes. And there's about three to five percent of the population that probably should, could, and needs to do that. But the majority of us, truth is, if you're exercising the proper intensity, 20 to 30 minutes is all that's required to boost your metabolism. And you notice it in how you feel, okay, because after interval or uh, uh, circuit style training you probably notice that you're really quite tired particularly about 20 minutes or so after class those hormones take a dive everything kind of crashes you feel really sleepy almost like you feel like you need to have a nap now that feeling is okay as long as it only lasts about five to ten minutes but I remember plenty of workouts where it's like man I was just bagged all night I just wanted to lay down sleep take it easy and was just exhausted okay this is actually 
is beyond the metabolic effect that we want. And all we've really done is we've tapped into our body's resources for recovery and we're forcing it to use more resources for recovery. That creates two problems. One, we can't exercise as often, okay? And number two, and more importantly, it actually hampers our immune system, okay? And in today's world where people are getting sick more often than ever, I think we really wanna stay focused on boosting our immune system. So in an interval type situation or we're using intensity type exercise, it's important to understand that it needs to be hard. In those work situations, after you've exercised a few times and have kind of adapted to the exercise that you're doing, you want to make sure that you're performing at about an 8 or 9 on a year scale of 10 for difficulty. So it needs to be like as hard as you can. Okay, and those rest times need to be like really calmed down to let your heart rate recover as quickly as possible. If you do this effectively, 20 to 30 minutes is actually all that's needed, okay? And your body will continue to burn an increased number of calories for anywhere between six and 48 hours. And that's the science of physiology, okay? But working out longer at that point, like I said, may hamper your immune system. Now, it's not true of everybody. Like I said, there's that three to 5% of people that can, could, should, and so on. But truthfully, the majority of us, when we're training in longer situations, what's actually happening is our body is saving energy because this thing up here is way smarter than we are. Okay, our brain subconsciously works to save energy. So it knows how much work you intend to do even before you do it. And it actually goes to work conserving resources so you can survive. So you think that you are training as hard as you can for that longer period of time, but in reality, your brain is holding you back so it can survive. It's a survival mechanism. So try it, put this to the test. For two weeks, I challenge you to cut your works out, workouts in half, okay, but commit to training even harder. And I think you'll notice after two weeks, you'll suddenly make really big strength gains and you'll notice that you actually can work harder in each of those intervals because your brain over that course of two weeks will adapt and say, hey, we're doing less work. We can put more effort into each component of work that we do. All right, you know what? I'm already rattling on longer than I thought I would. I've shared more uh, information than I intended to today, so hopefully it kind of isn't overwhelming and confusing. And I do hope that this will help many of you understand how your body works, both whether you're using our services and even if you're exercising on your own. Okay, I'm Cable from One to One. We are always here to help. You take care and hopefully this helps.